Hello, everyone. I am Kashif Kamran. The Strategic Business Leader September 2024 exams is tomorrow, and I would like to extend my best wishes to all the students. Moreover, I would like to share the last moment exam techniques and advices, which would immensely help you in boosting your prospects of success. Firstly, to me, intelligence is the most important thing tomorrow. How well you are prepared is secondary. but demonstrating intelligence uh delivering your best within the 195 minutes tomorrow is what is the primary factor for success now i have seen students who get stressed out on the day of exam uh who can't overcome the panic uh they just lose the track even though they were so well prepared for the big day so any student who demonstrate uh the emotional stability and grab the opportunities look for opportunities uh, and try to do the best within the time you have would sail through and will be successful so please ensure that you all are demonstrating an emotional stability tomorrow keeping yourself calm and composed there might be something you you don't know just hold it for the end of the exam keep time for it come back to it and do it later uh, focus first on the requirements on the parts of the requirements you know you can deliver you're good at just just gain confidence through that and something you don't know just keep holding it for the end come back to it later and do it you know every mark has 1.95 minutes so if there is a 10 marks requirement which you don't know you can keep 20 minutes for it uh, and come back to it later rather than just uh, building up your stress uh, staring at the screen glaring at the screen and and not not doing anything so wise decision making opportunities optimism is what should be uh, the center stage tomorrow but if you get pessimistic if you get distracted if you keep building upon the stress uh, you're not overcoming your panic panic mode in the exam tomorrow it would be it would be disastrous so to me intelligence is the center stage tomorrow how well you are prepared is a secondary phenomena secondly you know reading and planning time is so important in sbl or in any strategic level paper utilization of this time is important uh I always tell my student that one fourth of the total time you have in exam is for reading and planning. So, if you have a task for forty minute, a uh, forty mark, sorry, you will multiply that by one point nine five. So, approximately, you will get something like eighty minutes to do it. From that eighty minutes, one fourth is reading and planning. So, that's like twenty minutes, and the remaining sixty minutes is to write the answer. that one fourth is a very important investment because there there is plenty to read plenty to understand before you attack on and execute a good answer a lot of time the student compromises this one fourth a lot of time the students don't read the requirement well the student don't blend the requirement with the case specific information uh, they're just in a hurry to build up the answer you will not be writing a good answer if you're not investing one fourth of your time in reading and planning and to me this is crucial definitely familiarity with biago the pre scene you know biago uh, is a transport network company i hope by now you have built your familiarity with biago the terminologies the types of services the biago offer uh, the risk uh, the biago is facing the corporate governance structure of biago and the, the number of cities they are they have their operations in who is the competitor of biago uh, what sort of issues biago is currently facing etc or what are industry characteristics the transport network uh, company now familiarity with the pre scene can help you somewhere when you're building upon your answer tomorrow but remember that pre scene is not the answer it's it's not like 100% of the answer would come from pre scene or that's that's where the students start doing the question spotting on pre scene what will come what what topic will come which model will come examining team has told so many times that pre scene is not the answer the answer will come from the exhibits on the day of exam pre scene is just there to provide you the context somewhere 
the information in pre-seen might be recalled by a student and can it can be relatable to the answer you're writing just building upon this point the information presented in the specific exhibit on the day of exam will build up your answer so when you're reading the tasks the you will identify which exhibit to read through to build up my answer you will read through that exhibit and and then execute your answer pre-seen can help you somewhere but there has there should not be a forceful application of pre-seen in every answer uh, that is what students do uh, do in the previous exam settings that they forcefully apply the pre-scene when it should not be uh, you might spontaneously recall something because you have revised the pre-scene you have familiarity with pre-scene you might spontaneously record uh, recall something which might build up your explanation which might build up the depth of the point you're developing but not a forceful application because majority of the answer would be extracted from the case specific exhibits given to you tomorrow. Don't lose the journal professionalism marks, which are part of your professional skill marks in SPL. And you know, you need to do pretty simple things for that. You need to ensure you're putting your answer in the right format, the format requested by the examiner in the task. You are ensuring you are giving headings and subheadings. You are ensuring you are avoiding writing in long paragraphs. Sometimes the student write in longer paragraph, like seven sentences, eight sentences, without giving a break, putting a full stop. That's not what the examining team likes a lot. Ensuring you are not repeating a point within the answer. Where necessary, try to provide a conclusion. Uh, there are a lot of requirement in SPL which ask you to assess something, evaluate something. So try to give a conclusion for assessment and evaluation. Th these, these sort of things definitely add value. And this value is part of your journal professional marks in SPL, which are part and parcel of your 20 professional skill marks. Rote learning or generic write-up has no space in SPL. It's more about connectivity and adaption. Connectivity and adaption holds the key to success. So if you are just uh, reproducing your rote learn knowledge about a model, about a theory, or you're just writing generic, not, not connecting things with the case study, uh, you might be writing something about a macroeconomic environment, but you're just trying to give definitions of what is a political environment or what is an economic environment, but you're not relating that political or economic environment with, with the characteristics given in the exhibit. Or you're trying to write something about uh, the suitability, acceptability, and feasibility of a given strategic option, but you're trying to give the definition what suitability means or what acceptability means, but you're not trying to connect these parameters within the given information in the scenario. That is much needed. So a lot of times the student just build upon a model and a theory or just try to explain the model and theory. They're not connecting the model and theory with the specific information in the exhibit. There is no space for definitions. There's no space for explaining a model. You just need to start the direct application of a model or a theory with the case specific information. So any student uh, going with a generic write-up or rote learn write-up around us around a topic uh, is useless. Suppose you get something around six capitals and you're wasting time explaining the six capitals. Uh, it's useless. You should have connected the manufacturing capital or the financial capital or the intellectual capital with, with the information given to you in the case study. Three essentials of success in SBL. I've already uh, shed light on that in my previous uh, slide. Adaption, case linkage, and the depth of a point ex uh, explained or developed. I would try to focus more on the depth. Uh, I've already talked about adaption in the previous slide, case linkage, uh, extraction of information from the case. Uh, try to take information as much as possible from the case and building up your answer. But the more important thing is the depth. Uh, the point should be well developed. Now, to me, if a student take one sentence, copy pasted from the exhibit, suppose when he was reading the exhibit, he copy pasted a point, now, that one sentence is coming from the case study, copy paste it, or you might rephrase that. The, from the second sentence, you start to explain. So if you just stop at the sentence two, 
what sort of explanation you have done because the very first sentence ideally is something you've taken from the case the second sentence is where you are building upon so to me if you if you if you're doing a good explanation that should be three to four sentences so the first sentence is the copy paste after that sentence another two to three sentences so another two to three sentences would be good enough for the depth of explanation needed there is no hard and fast definition for the depth but honestly one sentence copy pasted from the case and one more sentence added to it that is not the proper explanation uh, three to four sentences at least help you develop a point in a manner which demonstrate more of a professionalism uh, needed to impress your SBL marker. Finally, the step-by-step -step approach. When you start your exams, you know what you need to do first. You will first be reading the task, understanding the task, uh, identifying what you need to do. Once you're very sure about what you need to do, you will then go and connect that particular task with the specific exhibit where the answer is in. You will read through that exhibit, you will copy paste the relevant points and you will keep dumping those relevant points in your word processor. Now this all is being done in the reading and planning time. Now once the reading and planning time is over and you have copy pasted things into your word processor, it's now time to write up the answer. Now when you're writing the answer because the points have been copy pasted, so at least they are case specific. You just need to ensure you are applying the depth of a well-developed point and ensure that if you're uh, applying a theory or a model that is adapted to the case, not writing the journal model or theory. So adaption, case linkage and depth would help you when you're developing the answer and that would assure that you have a greater prospects of passing the SPL exam. The passing rates for SPL we know are very healthy. It's 50% or more than 50% in every, every exam setting. So it's not a challenging paper. The only thing you need to do is that you need to know the essentials to impress the marker. And if you know the essentials to impress the marker, you will do your best tomorrow. So I wish you all the very best of luck for your exams tomorrow. I hope this last moment advice, particularly intelligence tomorrow, your emotional stability tomorrow, your calmness tomorrow, and taking the right decision tomorrow holds the key for success tomorrow. All the best. Take care. Goodbye. And Allah Hafiz.